Hello students, as promised, I indicated that I would go over the next theoretical area that you guys have been assigned. I know that we had Senator Tim Kaine visit with us and we we're thrilled to have him visit with us, but I wanted to make sure that I went over with you the specific details that are in the strategic leadership PowerPoint for which you'll be responsible on your test. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with that now and I'm going to share my screen. So one of the things that I want to do when I cover this material is to one, go over what the definition is of strategic leadership and particularly the upper echelons perspective, which is technically the theoretical area that focuses on how strategic leadership can give firms competitive advantage. Uh, I also want to show you guys what is required of you if you are assigned a theory instead of a chapter. If you guys remember under course projects in our syllabus, and I'm gonna pull that up for you right now, is that each one of you guys is gonna be responsible for presenting either a chapter or a theory or theoretical area. If you are presenting a chapter, it's pretty straightforward what you need to cover. You're, you're gonna end up going over the core content in the chapter. Your chapter is a, is a very well-organized chapter. All of them are because the textbook is a really great textbook. It goes over the core contents uh, of, of, of the chapter in great detail uh, as a summary, even before the chapter starts. They have headers, they have bolded and highlighted words, key concepts and terms that are pulled out. So it's relatively easy for you guys to follow through uh, the way that the chapter is already structured and for you to structure your PowerPoint that way when you're covering the material. What you will have to do, obviously, when you're covering the chapters, you don't want to share everything with us. You want to highlight the key points. But I think it's still the chapters are set up so well and so uh, easily uh, so or, or so uh, easy to understand and to follow that you'd be able to do that effectively. The theories are different. The theory material that I've given you to read is by and large from academic journal articles. Some of it is summary of those academic journal articles, fortunately for you, uh, so that you don't have to go over the content uh, in, in, in the same depth as if you were reading it for the first time. However, uh, I, I've given you four main points that I want you guys to look for if you have a theory area, because it's different than the chapter of material, which is very practitioner oriented. So if you look at your syllabus, what I've indicated is that if you get a theory, you are required to cover the four areas in your written or, and oral presentation. So you can think of that as in your PowerPoint presentation or Word document. But PowerPoint is usually the most effective if you're going to uh, do a presentation for the rest of your class. Is you've got four sections, essentially, that you're going to cover in your PowerPoint. The first is going to be what is the definition of the theory? The second is going to be based on the theory from where does competitive advantage derive for firms. Remember that the whole purpose of strategic management is for you to understand how firms can achieve competitive advantage. And so all of the theories that I have us covering in this course are also designed to help you see how over time the whole uh, field of strategy in management has evolved so that we understand the different places from which firms can derive competitive advantage. So, but each one of the theories and the theoretical areas that I've given to you indicates that firms derive competitive advantage from a different place. And I wanna make sure that you guys are able to identify that from the reading material. I think it's pretty straightforward, uh, but again, that's what you need to make sure that you've identified. Based on this theory, from where does competitive advantage derive? Uh, from where does the theory say that a firm gets competitive advantage? What is the source of competitive advantage? All right, the, th the third thing that you need to address is, is the source of competitive advantage an internal or an external source? That's important because the field of strategy has kind of got two main camps. It's a camp that has uh, focused on competitive advantage coming from internal sources like resources and capabilities and a camp that says that competitive advantage derives from external sources, environmental factors uh, like uh, the market to market conditions, uh, industry structure. And so what we're doing is we are 
identifying in each of these theories that I have you covering, whether that source of competitive advantage is an internal or an external source. There are a couple where the answer would be both. And then the fourth thing that you need to answer is what is or what are the common units of analysis for this body of theoretical research? So don't freak out when I say units of analysis. Really, all of these uh, things that you're reading about in your practitioner-oriented textbook are the result of somebody doing some strategy research, some academic research, some testing that says that, okay, these are the characteristics of leaders that we see lend themselves to firms deriving competitive advantage from them. These are the sorts of resources and capabilities and the characteristics of them that lend themselves to firms being able to derive competitive advantage from them. This is, uh, these are the characteristics of an industry or the factors in an industry that lend themselves to a firm being able to derive competitive advantage. And so really what's happened is in each one of these theory areas, researchers were studying, observing, measuring, or counting something. And that's what they were able to identify as a source of competitive advantage. And so what you're going to want to do for each one of these theoretical areas is to identify what that unit of analysis is. So if it is uh, research or strategic leadership, then guess what? By and large, what the uh, researchers were looking at were uh, leadership characteristics, leadership capabilities, a leadership background. Uh, so uh, typically the a unit of analysis is going to be pretty straightforward. So obviously what they were observing were the leaders or they were observing the leader's characteristics, et cetera. But you're going to need to be able to identify that for each one of the theory areas that you're supposed to cover. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to the strategic leadership lesson, which is our first theoretical area. And then I'm going to cover that content with you in order in, in the way that I've explained to you that you need to cover it in order for you to be able to see what you need to do and you can model that. One other thing that you can cover, and, and I think that this is useful, I, I apologize, this skipped up, is after you've made sure you've got those four points, then you can give us some, some additional information. So uh, some other relevant information like who is or who was, if they're deceased, the main theorist or the theorist who first established that theory, that's relevant. So we're gonna to wanna to know some of those names. So when we talk about industrial organization, we'll talk about Bain and Mason, and then we'll talk about Porter's role. Uh, and then when we talk about uh, different theories, then we're gonna identify uh, different researchers who were extremely important in that area and helped to establish really like the definition for some of those theories and for the concepts. So you could give us that information, but remember that's not what you start with. You start with these four points. What is the definition of the theory? Where does competitive advantage come from based on the theory? Uh, is the source of competitive advantage an internal and external source? And what is the unit of analysis for this body of theoretical research? You do those things for sure, those are required. And then after that, you can tell us who or who was the main theorist or, the, or theorists. Uh, how does understanding this theory help managers? Because that's what's important. You guys uh, aspire to be general managers one day. So how would this help you in that role? And then thirdly, you could tell us things like, what are some other key insights that you could derive or that one could derive uh, from the academic journal article? And maybe just some unique insights that you found uh, based on, on the reading, okay? So now I'm gonna go over strategic leadership. So again, you see my, my table of contents is what is the definition of the theory? What is the source of competitive advantage? Uh, is, is it an internal or external source of competitive advantage? Just as I've asked you guys to do. What is the unit of analysis or what are the units of analysis? And then other relevant research findings. You don't have to structure this exactly as I have it. You may want to call the specific areas that you've decided to focus on that are outside of these four required areas, something else. But I do think that this should be, uh, that your outline for your PowerPoint should be structured very similar to this. So when we talk about uh, strategic leadership, you can think of it in two ways. Strategic leadership is both something that you can uh, observe in practice, right? It's something that people are, are, are doing. It's something that a, 
a leadership team or an individual who's leading a firm does. Um, and it's also a theoretical or research area of strategic management. So the first uh, thing that I'm going to explain is how would you define strategic leadership? In practice, it is a person or an executive team's ability to anticipate, to envision, to maintain flexibility, to think strategically, and to work with others, emotional intelligence, to initiate change that will create a viable future for an organization. And we know that the viable future that we as strategists always seek is competitive advantage. As a field of research in strategic management, uh, then strategic leadership focuses on senior executives uh, at the top of organizations, including the CEO, top management leadership team members, maybe vice presidents of marketing and finance, CFOs, uh, depending on the way that a firm is structured. And then also business unit or division heads. So these are going to be the general managers of divisions or business units of a, of a conglomerate or major firm. And these are people they're the general managers who make substantive decisions concerning the direction and the overall positioning of a firm. So it's the field of research uh, in strategic management that focuses on the top management team and its members. Now, there is actually a subset of strategic leadership that is more theoretical than others. And so uh, it's called the upper echelons perspective. It's not considered a salient theory, but it's definitely a theoretical area. And really, if you want to summarize or define upper echelons, uh, Hambrick and Mason in 1984 wrote a paper that gives us the, uh, the main understanding uh, of where firms can derive competitive advantage really based on the upper echelons. It says that they say that organizational outcomes are partially predicted by managerial background characteristics. So organizational outcomes, when we talk about that, we mean uh, competitive advantage, right? That's what we're, we're focused on. Uh, but organizational outcomes are partially predicted, at least, by the managerial background characteristics. So the main idea of this is who you have leading your firm or your organization is a predictor of that firm's or that organization's success. That's just a simple way for you to understand the upper echelon's uh, perspective. And that's based on them actually measuring, uh, researching, observing leaders' actions and, their and analyzing their background, char background characteristics and then being able to determine that those particular background characteristics are positively associated with firm performance. So what we need to look at next, now that we've defined strategic leadership in upper echelon, which is the main theoretical area in strategic leadership, then the second thing we need to focus on is what is the source of competitive advantage based on this theory or theoretical area? And so based on this theory or theoretical area, and the source of competitive advantage is the characteristics and capabilities of leaders. So it's leaders. So when we look at general managers, top leadership team members of, of firms, they are, their background, their characteristics are, based on this theoretical area, the source of competitive advantage for firms. Or you could, if you want to be very technical, say they are a source of competitive advantage for firms because it says the organizational outcomes are at least partially predicted by managerial background characteristics. So the third thing based on what I've asked you guys to always cover that you know, make sure that you uh, identify is whether or not the source of competitive advantage that you've identified that the theory says is where firms derive competitive advantage. Is it an internal or an external source? Is it something that comes from within the firm, something that they're more able to possibly control uh, or is it an external source, something that they'll have less potential control over? So obviously, leaders are employees within firms. So I'd like you guys to have some sort of rationale as to why you guys chose or choose whether or not a source of competitive advantage is an internal or external source. So I have here just a sample of this so that you guys can understand 
how you could write it. Or even if you don't write it in this detail, you could at least rationalize why you make the choice as opposed to just randomly choosing it. You want to have a basis or justification for your selection. So since general managers, that would include, again, the CEOs, the general managers, top leadership team members are employees within firms and are not outside of firms in the market or the external environment, then the source of competitive advantage based on the upper echelons or strategic leadership theoretical area is internal. So it's an internal source of competitive advantage, which I think is kind of obvious with this. Obviously, a leader is an employee of a firm. And so the source of competitive advantage for the firm is clearly from its uh, head employee, its general manager, internal source. All right, so we covered one, two, three. Definition, source of competitive advantage, whether it's internal or external. So the fourth thing that you need to cover is what is the unit of analysis? So you got to remember, upper echelon says that managerial backgrounds are at least uh, partially predictive of firm performance, right? Uh, so if that is in fact the case, then they had to be observing, right, or counting, uh, measuring uh, managerial background characteristics and even assessing which particular managerial background uh, characteristics lend themselves to a firm achieving competitive advantage. And so a unit of analysis is uh, essentially just, just simplified in your brain so that you don't overthink it. Uh, it's what researchers have studied and observed in order for them to prove their theory, right? Or prove their hypothesis at which point, and once it's proven, this is this theory. So researchers have studied and observed the following areas to prove that firm's competitive advantage is at least in part derived from firm's leaders. So what they often will observe is firm performance. So their profitability, uh, their uh, survival, uh, perhaps in a turbulent market. The bottom line is firm performance. They'll also look at leadership characteristics. You know, the reason that we have that list of characteristics in your textbook of uh, leader, strategic leadership ideal characteristics is because there has been research that has shown that leaders that have those particular characteristics are inclined to lead their firms to greater performance. So another thing that you can uh, that, that firms have observed are leadership character or leader characteristics and they've looked at leader capabilities. Uh, so units of analysis for this theoretical area would be firm performance, leader characteristics, and leader capabilities. So now that I've done what is required of me by my professor and I've answered these four uh, required areas that she has in the syllabus, uh, for each for the theory that I'm responsible for covering, the definition of the theory, I'm just reiterating, uh, where does competitive advantage come from or the source of competitive advantage? Uh, is that an internal or external source of competitive advantage? And then unit of analysis, I've answered those. Now I can go to some other relevant areas and other key findings in this research area that are useful to managers or just insightful, uh, period. And that's what, what I'm going to go over with you now. So the, the upper echelon's perspective, or, or just the notion that uh, leaders' background characteristics, at least in part, contributes to a firm's performance has been affirmed in multiple academic studies. And uh, if you really want to summarize what a lot of the research says is that it affirms top leadership team, it's, it's uh, upper echelons of, of the firm. Uh, impact the following aspects of firm strategy. They affect new venture performance. That's things like profitability. That's things like survival and turbulence. Uh, that, that's things like a stock performance, right? So new venture performance. They, uh, uh, leaders also impact strategic decision-making for firms, and they impact a firm's capacity for financial capital acquisition, which is really important, especially uh, for publicly traded firms uh, and then other times, even for maybe some private firms that are seeking investors. So uh, who you have in charge of your firm can impact your new venture's performance. Uh, it can impact strategic decision making for uh, existing and even novel firms. And it can impact a firm's capacity to acquire the capital necessary for its operations. And so there are several different articles that uh, address different uh, findings uh, in, in this theoretical area, but uh, 
things like uh, that top top management team cohesion and the extent to which top leaders in a firm work together uh, well. Uh, that's obviously it makes sense to 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 us to think it does, but it it lends itself to new venture growth. It's positively related to new venture growth. Uh, top management teams with a larger initial number of members are likely to add even more members. That's an observance, right? So if you've got a, a large number of top uh, members or upper echelon members in your leadership team, you're likely to add even more members. But the more members that you add, then it reduces the capacity for the firm to achieve uh, profitability. So perhaps uh, what happens is that um, more people bring more conflict so then you have the converse of what happened in the earlier finding with uh, top management team cohesion lending itself to a uh, new venture growth. And there's some other key findings I want to go over with you. Um, the larger the size of the top management uh, team, the faster the timing of a move, a strategic move. That seems somewhat counterintuitive to me, right? So a larger size kind of makes me think it's got more channels to go through, more processing to go through. But there is a perhaps the wisdom in collective decision making. So the larger the size of the top management team, the faster the timing of the move, obviously, uh, which could impact a, a firm's ability to get ahead of the market and perform better. Um, decision comprehensiveness and speed are, are higher when you've got top management teams that have individual decision authority for their respective areas of responsibility. So when you have like that vice president of marketing, vice president of finance, assisting the CEO uh, with making decision uh, decisions for the, for the firm's strategy, then what you're able to do is uh, have more effective and comprehensive de decision making. And then the last thing that we talked about is that uh, we know that uh, the characteristics of the leaders of a firm can impact a firm's capacity to acquire the capital necessary for operations. And so uh, investor decisions are affected by the extent of a firm's top management teams, uh, employment affiliations with prominent downstream organizations. So oftentimes when you have CEOs of firms, then what they have done is they have worked at lower levels of similar firms and in similar industries, and sometimes at lower levels of different firms in different industries, but in similar roles. And that's useful for whatever firm they end up with uh, at the top uh, helm uh, of the organization. Uh, because what it does is uh, it impacts investor decisions. So it, I know that I was looking at some of the successful Afri African-American CEOs uh, right now. And right now, the CEO of Lowe's is an African-American. And he actually previously worked in a, a business unit leadership role with Home Depot <clears throat> before he was the CEO of Lowe's. And so I think that that's obviously relevant. And so uh, the fact that he has those uh, other experiences can affect, and, and it says based on this research, that it, it will affect, it was likely to affect investor decisions. Uh, investors are the ones that give the risk capital to firms in order for them to uh, be able to uh, engage in whatever activities or conduct their operations, uh, maybe expand or whatever the purpose is that they need the risk capital. So that is strategic leadership. And I'm going to go ahead and stop this video now. And then this information is not going to be on a quiz that you guys have, but it will be on your test. So your very first exam will ask you, depending on whether or not you, you get this question, I have several essay questions and they're all uh, randomly assigned to different students so that we don't have any unauthorized collaboration. So nobody gets the same exact test. And there are about 15 different essay questions not that everybody gets, but they're all randomly assigned. So most students will get between two and six essay questions uh, in their tests, and they're all going to be different. I know that I have about two of the questions that it's possible for each one of you to get. 
uh, that are related to strategic leadership. And so I'll ask you things like, what is the definition of strategic leadership based on the readings that you were exposed to? How can uh, strategic leadership impact a firm's capacity to achieve competitive advantage? So you may get a question like that. So it is useful uh, for you to have had this lecture review and for you to read the PowerPoint that I've provided yourself. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next class.